Hey guys, it's Cigar. Today we're going to be going over my Magical Warden build for the Fire Song chapter. I really like this build a lot. I feel like it's one of the best 1vx builds that I've really found during this patch. And honestly, it's really crazy to see Warden be actually viable again, especially a Mag Warden. It's a lot of fun and I definitely recommend checking it out. It's been really just, it's been fun to play. I know I've said it already. But I really enjoy it, and I really hope that you guys do too. And by the way, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. We're trying to hit our goal of 3,500 subs by the end of the month, and we are just about 100 away. So with each and every one of you guys, I think we can get there. So guys, without further ado, let's get on with the video. All right, guys, let's get started. First things first, we're going to look at our character sheet. We are going to be a Breton on our Warden. Warden kind of suffers with sustain issues sometimes, so Breton is the best way to combat that. If you want to go full into damage, I recommend something like Khajiit or, I don't know, maybe even High Elf. But honestly, Breton, in my opinion, is the best way to go for this. It is just so much fun to be able to just have that sustain and be able to just go and just repeatedly go offensive on this build. And because of Breton, you are allowed to. We're going to have 49 points into magic and 15 points into a health for our attributes to give us a max magic pool of 25.6k and a max health pool of 27.8k. But do not worry, your minor toughness brings you up to 30k max health. But you know, here, I'll show you right now. Uh, so if you just... Uh, sorry, I need to use my controller. I don't know how buttons work on my PC. So as you can see, our health gets to 30.3k. So if you want more than that, honestly, you know, put more points into health. But I kind of like the way it is. I don't feel like I'm uh, too squishy or too low health at all. So anyway, back to our character sheet. We're going to have our Munda Stone as the warrior to increase our weapon damage as much as possible. And then our food is going to be Orzoga Smart's Bear Haunch to give us a max health pool of, uh, increase our max health of by 4,300 and our stamina and magic recovery by 369. And that gives our magic recovery about 1416 and our stamina recovery to 1174. And that is unbuffed without a pot and everything. So I like that. I feel like that's pretty good for your sustain area. And then onto our gear. Our helmet is going to be a heavy Ice Furnace helmet in Reinforced. Ice Furnace is going to give you a line of max magic, crit chance, weapon and spell damage, and then when you deal frost damage, you deal an additional 947 uh, flame damage to all enemies within 8 meters around the initial target, and this effect can occur once every 1 second. So it is always proc, and it's always going off, and you're going to probably about double that uh, tooltip when you are fully buffed up, so if, if that looks low to you, don't worry, it gets to just shy of 2k, uh, you don't really need to worry about that. It really hits hard and it gives a lot of pressure for your AOE and it's really nice for your sustained pressure on this build. It really feels nice when you're in the middle of a large fight or in the middle of an enclosed area as well. Our shoulder is going to be a medium magma incarnate in divines. The reason why we're using magma incarnate is because we have one extra slot in this build and getting that is going to give you the magic and stamina recovery in the one piece. If you don't have Magma Incarnate, you can also use Baron Thirsk, I believe, does the exact same thing for your magic and the stem recovery. But for me, I already have Magma Incarnate, so we are definitely using the Divines one right there. Uh, our chest piece is going to be Ice Furnace in Reinforced. Our uh, waist is going to be Rallying Cry in Divines. Rallying Cry is going to give us a line of crit chance, max magic, another line of crit chance, and while Battle Spirit is active, aka when you're in Cyrodiil, Battlegrounds, Imperial City, or in a duel. Critically healing yourself or an ally is going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 300 and also your critical resistance by tw uh, by uh, 1650. So that is why we're in all divines on this build. I like it so much. It is uh, a really good way to build offensive because of that. You're not squishy uh, because of your critical resistance. And then also you could build your, uh, your smaller pieces. I use my heavy pieces to put into reinforce. But your smaller pieces, you could put divines. And that really lets you build offensively into your uh, Munda Stone as well. So I really like Rallying Cry for this reason. Our feet are going to be Rallying Cry and Divines as well. Our legs are going to be Ice Furnace, Heavy, and Reinforced. And our hands are going to be Rallying Cry in Divines. And as you can see, all of our enchantments are going to be Prismatic to increase our max stats as much as possible. Our jewelry is going to be Ice Furnace. The, our necklace is going to be Ice Furnace in Bloodthirsty trait with a weapon damage enchantment on it. 
Our mythic on this build is going to be Ring of the Pale Order. So yes, this is a solo build. I really like this on here. Your amount of dots that you have, or your dots, your AOE pressure, everything about this lets you just be able to really go offensive while also healing yourself. It's really helpful. And honestly, the healing that I've gotten from this is actually nuts. The only thing that ends up out healing this every now and then is your resolving vigor. Everything besides that, this heals you more for an extended fight. It is so good on Magden. I love it so much. Please give it a shot. If you don't have access to Pale Order, uh, use something like Markin maybe to help your uh, damage, your to help your damage a lot and your tankiness. But honestly, I really like Pale Order. I definitely recommend trying to get it. And again, Bloodthirsty with a weapon damage enchant. And then our other ring is going to be Ice Furnace with a weapon damage enchantment, also in Bloodthirsty. Our weapons are going to be on your front bar, a Master's Perfected Ice Staff in the Charge Trait with a Shock Damage Glyph on it. The reason why we're using Master's Perfected Ice Staff is because the Perfected line gives you an extra 103 weapon and spell damage. And then the actual what the actual master staff does is it reduces the cost of destructive touch by 10 percent, which cool but it also increases your weapon and spell damage by 600 for four seconds after activating that so that is a free 703 weapon and spell damage that is absolutely massive that is so much extra damage just by using one ability it is so fun i like it so much it really increases your damage so much and it really makes your uh, resolving Vigors hit hit harder when that is active, and also it makes your Ice Furnace tooltip hit a lot harder as well. So overall, it is helping your build so much. And then back bar is going to be a Rallying Cry Ice Staff in Infused with a Weapon and Spell Damage Enchantment on it as well. You need Infuse on the back bar to proc some of your abilities properly. I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend using it like this. So let's go into our skills so that we can explain a little bit more about the build. Uh, let's go with our front bar first. We're going to be using Frost Reach. This is going to be what's buffed by your uh, Master's Ice Staff. This is going to be your main spam ball on this build. It hits pretty nicely when you're fully buffed up. And then on top of that, each tick of this, whenever you're hitting somebody, is also going to proc your Ice Furnace. So it's a little two-in-one. It really uh, does a lot of damage overall. Bird of Prey, this is going to be your source of major expedition and uh, increasing your movement speed by 30%. Gain immunity to snares and immobilizations for four seconds after activating it as well. And then on top of that, you're also gonna get minor berserk just for having this slotted as well. So it's gonna increase your damage done by 5%. I really, really, really like it. Crystallized Slab, this is so, so, so good for your defense. It is unbelievable having snipers or somebody or even somebody using a bolt on you and just activating this you just watch somebody go from 100 to zero health in like two seconds it is honestly one of the best forms of defense that you can possibly ask for on this build and i really 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 love it so much uh deep fisher this is going to be uh one of your main burst damages uh, it's kind of tough to line the second part of it. So you activate it, then three seconds later, uh, the shulks go out in front of you. Then after, uh, what is it, another three seconds, they get hit again, but for more damage. So it's kind of tough to line that up. And I always end up reapplying it by accident. But if you can keep it out so that the second hit hits uh, them directly, it is a lot of damage. And then on top of that, uh, your enemies are going to be afflicted with major and minor breach reducing their physical and spell resistance by 6k and 3k. So you just by hitting them with this ability, you're lowering somebody's resistances by 9,000. So that is massive. And then finally on our front bar, we're gonna have Ice Fortress. This is gonna be your source of major resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 6k. And then also you're gonna be gaining minor protection, reducing your damage taken by 5% for 30 seconds as well. Then our ultimate on our front bar is going to be Dawnbreaker. We're going to use this every now and then. This is going to be our main ultimate. This is just so that you have the Fighter's Guild passive to increase your weapon spell damage overall. Uh, I really like using it to finish off kills every now and then, but overall I prefer my back bar ultimate a lot more. All right, our back bar abilities are going to be Arctic Blast. This is going to be your burst heal. You're going to really not want to use this until you get to kind of lower health. You're going to want to try and keep your hots doing most of the work. 
but when you're taking too much damage, that's when that's when you use Arctic. Or if you need to CC somebody, that's a good thing for Arctic as well. Blue Betty, this is going to be your source of major brutality and sorcery, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 20%. And also, every 5 seconds, the Nets removes one negative effect from you, so honestly, don't sleep on that either. Resolving Vigor, this is going to be your main heal over time. Uh, this is going to be a 5 second heal, it's going to give you a lot of health back. And also on top of that, you're getting minor resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 3k for 20 seconds. Legion Binds, this is going to be another heal over time that you get. I prefer this morph because of the minor lifesteal that you get. It is a great way to heal yourself between this and Resolving Vigor. It is a lot of healing between the two of them. And then on top of that, Pale Order as well. That's basically three heals over time. And then on top of that, you have your Arctic Blast. It is a very heal heavy build and I really like it. And then finally, Blockade of Frost. I like this morph over the other one because it's just a little bit longer and the range on it is a little bit bigger as well. So this is going to be a great way to keep your Ice Furnace up as much as possible. And then also your Infused Back Bar is going to really buff this as well. I love it so much. You definitely want to have this on your Back Bar and then switch to your Front Bar. Do not keep this slotted on your Front Bar. Keep it active. Uh, keep it slotted on your Back Bar. Please trust me. And then our Back Bar Ultimate is going to be Northern Storm. I love this I love this ult so much. It does ridiculous damage over the 8 seconds. And then on top of that, you're also going to be proccing if, if if you haven't hit your enemies with anything else, this is also going to proc your ice furnace. So not only are you going to get the damage from this, but you're going to get the damage from ice furnace as well. And it's also going to reduce your uh, enemy's movement speed by 40%. Huge. Increasing your weapon and spell damage by 300 for 30 seconds as well. Huge. Which is also going to buff your... Uh, <laughs> at, as well as going to buff your Ice Furnace as well. And then on top of that, you get major protection. Reducing your damage taken by 10%. That is massive. I love this ultimate so much. I use this one so often. This is my one of my favorite ultimates in the game. I think Corrosive is still my favorite. But honestly, this is a close second. Then finally, let's go on to our champion points. Our blue slotables are going to be Focus Mending, get that healing up. Mastered Arms, direct damage. Ironclad, reducing your damage taken by direct damage. And Wrathful Strikes to increase our overall damage, not just our single target or AoE. Our red slotables are going to be Sustained by Suffering, Survival Instincts, Pain's Refuge, and Celerity. And then our green tree, the really only things we care about are Breakfall, Rationer, and liquid efficiency. All right, guys, that is the entire build. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really, really, really have been enjoying this build. I really never thought that I would see Magden be good again after how long it's been bad, but honestly, it feels amazing, and I definitely recommend giving it a shot. It is one of the best builds I've come up with this patch. I really like it so much. And guys, if you do like this build, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Every single subscription uh, helps me out so much. It's just following here. It's free, and honestly, we're trying to get to 3,500 subs by the end of the year, and we're just about to hit that 3,400 mark. So we just need a few hundred. To, we just need another hundred to go, and that would help me out so much. So guys, thank you so much. If you want to see builds like this live in action, you can catch me live at twitch.tv forward slash shakar, where I stream five days a week. So guys, come over, say what's up. The link will be in the description. But that's it from me, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. I appreciate you guys for being here so much. It's been an absolute honor to be able to show you guys these builds. Uh, I've been really enjoying the growth that we've gotten lately. You guys, I owe so much to you. But guys, that's it from me. Have a good rest of your day. And I will see you guys on the next video. Later.